well, so this video is gonna be about this. I just have to show you a quick shot of it in my one of my previous videos. And what this is is a uh, train HVAC uh, scroll compressor. I got it brand new. As you can see, it's still sealed up in the factory. It's still even got its uh, nitrogen purge inside. I'm guessing that's about five ten pounds per square inch. Got this at the tip. Brand new, never been used, but it's a uh, defective, sadly. Even on, even on the pallet from the factory. And I'll show you shortly what is wrong with it. It's very heavy, I'm guessing it's about uh, 150 pounds, maybe slightly more. I can, bar I can barely lift it into this truck. You the service port right there is where they charge up the nitrogen from the factory. Information tags, train, scroll compressor. There's the model number, I'm not going to read that off. You can pause the video if you want. Now, the voltage, voltage one is a 460 or 460 volts, and voltage two is a 380 volts to 415 volts. Max amps, 31 amps, and lock rotor amps, 158 amps. It's polyester oil. Meant for R410A refrigerant, made in Mexico. There's no oil in it. You can tell on the sight glass there's nothing in there. So, I've tried powering it up. There's no way I can run this off 110 volts. I do have a uh, Copeland compliance scroll, single phase. It's meant for 220 volts, but you can get away running it off just the house outlet off. 110, 120 volts, just pulls double the amps, but it still works. Down on power level with this one here, no way. Sadly. You need to run it even so, but. And we got the bigger problem why you can't run it at all, because. Shall we? Okay, so we got the multimeter set on ohms resistance. Now, if you uh, ohm the windings, what you find is, let's, let's go with the run winding. Let's stay in there. And let's go to ground. There, you hear that beep? The run winding is short to earth. Let's, let's go with the common. The common winding is short to earth. And let's do the start winding. Start winding is also short to earth. So all these uh, three windings are uh, all uh, there's a, just a dead short to earth. So that means if you do run this, the housing and everything will become live with electricity. Factory defect. I'm guessing the problem is you have this plug right here, which is a hermetic seal the compressor housing and you have another plug inside where the actual um, stator windings actually plug into it. I am guessing there's a short somewhere in this plug which we'll find out after I cut it apart. I'm not quite sure if this is single phase or three phase. Normally 460 or 380 415 volts is normally three phase but this doesn't say. I'm more than certain it is three phase. So. Well, it's quite a lot of oil, doesn't it? Seven pints, there's 3.3 .3 liters. For those of you wondering what the ohm reading is on the windings, I ohmed it. So you got the common and start and run windings at 1.8 ohms, the start and run at 1.6 ohms, the common and start at uh, 1.7 ohms. Very low resistance. Shows it all the there's a um, significant short in the system. So I hooked up my um, manifold gauges to the service port. As you can tell, it's just got around 5 psi of uh, nitrogen charge in it. As to keep moisture out of it so they, at the factory when this is built. They, when they're done building it, they just pull a vacuum on it and precharge it with nitrogen. Keep it sealed.
there's a, also should be a I'm guessing a nitrogen purge during the welding to keep the metal on the inside from oxidizing and forming uh, flakes and going on the oil and ruining the bearings. So it's a shame to scrap it, but I really have no use for it. I can't run it on all the windings are short, so might as well take it apart and do a video on it because they're fairly interesting inside. So we'll start by uh, letting nitrogen out and uh, just cut the top off. Just cut around this weld and pop the top off. Got the top cut off. Wasn't too hard, just a good powerful four and a half inch grinder and thin cutting disc. Here's the top. Quite heavy. Nothing much to it though. This is your low pressure side refrigerant and this is your high pressure side. High pressure discharge that is and it comes out here. And here is the top of the compressor inside what it looks like. It's a bit different than a uh, Copeland scroll because the Copeland scroll has a uh, moving seal that goes up and down which forces the scrolls together which causes them to wear in not wear out which is why they last longer. And it also acts as a unloader so the compressor can start with no load and then build full of pressure as it spins up easier on the electric motor, less amp draw on startup. And also the Copelands that have a uh, the scrolls, it can, uh, if you suck in liquid refrigerant on the Copeland scrolls, the scrolls can separate vertically or side to side by one millimeter to prevent uh, damage to the scrolls from liquid refrigerant. This one here, from what I can tell so far, doesn't have any of that. There's no moving seal on it either. You just have this fixed seal. It's a carbon seal, or... No, it's not a carbon seal, I see. It's a, a good rubber seal or something like that. It's really hard, and this is your dis high pressure discharge. And this right here is a reed valve. So when the compressor shuts off, you don't get a high pressure refrigerant bleeding back through the scrolls. So I'll remove these torque bits and we'll have a look at the scrolls themselves. Here's the reed valve disassembled. So in there you can see this edge right there which is the leading edge of the moving scroll right there. So your discharge will come out here. You have the spacer which will sit in like so. Then this is the actual reed valve itself, which sit just like so, and you have this, which holds it all together, just like that, and you have these three Allen screws which hold the reed valve in, very simple. So as pressure builds, this reed valve comes up, and pressure escapes, but as the compressor shuts off, you get back pressure on it, and that immediately slams it shut, and that's all there is to it, so get that out of the way, and remove these torque bolts, and you get the, the stationary scroll removed. Got the stationary scroll off. Very impressive, isn't it? Let's start with the stationary scroll. You got your discharge port right there, where the reed valve would go. Turn this over. Cast iron machined as well, with some lots of intricate machining involved. If you look closely here, you see these uh, laminated steel strips inserted into the contact surfaces of the scroll to make it uh, wear better, as well as retain oil. That would also help with sealing. They got the same laminated strips inserted into the moving scroll as well. This right here is the cyclode converter. It's aluminum. It's painted. See the, the, the contact parts of the cyclode converter where it would contact the moving scroll. There's pretty much absolutely no wear on it. And this guy was just sitting in. I don't remember how this goes. Back when I get. Here we go, got the cyclo converter back in. 
Now what this does is it prevents the scrolls from actually spinning like this. It's called scrambling, and then you, it's not good because the cyclo converter wears out, they start scrambling, and that's how you break bits of the scroll off and they make all sorts of horrid noises. So this, this is the moving part of the scroll. Here and here, it would tie into the stationary scroll. Right there and there. And that will all keep the scroll from spinning because the scroll is just supposed to oscillate. Which I will try to show you. I will try to show you how the scroll moves. It is quite difficult to move. There you go, it just oscillates like that in this housing. So, we'll get the scroll out and have a closer look at it. Here is the rotating scroll removed. Now, I'm not quite sure anymore if this compressor is brand new. First of all, it's uh, everything inside is soaked with polyester oil, which tells me it's been used. As well, you can see some of the marks right here in, in the scroll, as well as on the stationary scroll where the scrolls have been contacting for wear. But this kind of gives it away. This is your uh, main bearing in the rotating scroll. Look how badly scored that is. It's quite bad, isn't it? So, I'm not quite sure if this compressor was actually installed. It probably was tested at the factory and uh, tested defective, but I just can't really see that sort of damage happening to that bearing for being run for a very short amount of time. Here's what the crankshaft looks like. Your big counterweight. You got your eccentric right here. You can see this is where the center is. It's the pilot hole where they put it on the lathes to machine it. And then you have your eccentric hole which is also an oil gallery which provides that bearing with oil. And as well as there's a bearing under here as well. Which I will not be showing you because in order to remove it I have to press off this counterweight. Which is just too hard. I'm not going to do that. So, so now... I just gotta cut it somewhere around here, and hopefully the whole pump, bottom pump assembly will just drop out. Let's see if you look down in there, you can see part of the motor stator, which is that bronze looking thing right there. As well as maybe some of the, no, the camera's not picking it up, but the wires are right there. They go to that plug. So, yes, yeah, so let's continue dismantling it.